keep going with EOG review. This will be our third day of, I don't even know, it'll be about 23 days probably. One of the things you will need to be able to do on your EOG is be able to find missing values on tables. These problems are actually fairly simple for sixth grade math. They are a matter of either multiplication or division. It just kind of depends on which way you're going. So if I'm going from that 18 to the 3, am I multiplying or dividing? Dividing. By? So if I'm dividing by 6 right there, Guess what I'm doing right there? Yeah, dividing by 6. So what's 42 divided by 6? So that's a 7 right there. Now, I got a question mark on the opposite side down here. So that means I'm going the opposite direction. So the uh, yeah, opposite of dividing, that means I'm multiplying by 6. And what goes there? Any questions on that? All right, so sometimes it might be a little trickier what the numbers are. So like, I don't know, if I had my table, it could be X, Y, it could be input, output, it could be labeled as something else. X is on the left, Y is on the right though. If I had, let's say, if I had that, to go from 4 to 10, am I multiplying or dividing? Multiplying, because it's getting bigger. You can tell that part. What am I multiplying by, though? Hmm? Yeah, yeah 2.5. Most of you didn't seem to know that right away, though. Here's how that works. If you aren't sure, you know you're multiplying to go from 4 to 10, right? If you do the opposite... Take the number and divide by the other number. All right, so 10 divided by 4, that will tell you what you need to multiply by. Okay, so if you're ever not sure, you can do the division, and that will show what you multiply to go on the table. Any questions on that one? All right, surface area. Another one that is definitely going to be on calculator active. You can see surface area of a rectangular prism or surface area of a triangular prism. I picked a triangular prism because that one's harder. Y'all remember doing the rectangular prisms towards the beginning of the year? That's where you make like the pairs and just kind of multiply them out that way. So, what we have is we have five shapes. All right. One, two, three rectangles, one, two triangles. The triangles are the same size. So if you have a triangular prism, the triangles are the same size. So we find the area of each of those five shapes. So I'll start with the rectangles. How do you find area of a rectangle? Length times width. So the length is eight. Width is 4. So what's 8 times 4? 32. This rectangle here in the middle. What's the length of that rectangle? 8. 8 goes with all those rectangles, right? What's the width on that one? 3. So 8 times 3? 24. Last one, we got 8 times 4 again. So there's my rectangles. Like I said, I got the triangles. How do you find area of a triangle? 
base times height divided by 2. So my height, base height, and it doesn't really matter which one's which, order doesn't matter on multiplication. And we divide by 2. So 5 times 3 is 15. 15 divided by 2. And like I said, for a triangular prism, we got two triangles. They're both the same, though. All right, so now what? Add them all up. One oh three. All right, any questions on that? You should be able to do something like this without a calculator, right? The good news, or the easier news for you, though, is this is always going to be a calculator active thing, okay? Ratios are another thing. Ratio of buses to cars, or three buses to five cars in the school parking lot. Asking about some equivalent ratios. So remember, with ratios, ratios can be written three different ways. They can be written with those two little dots, the word two, or as a fraction. The order matters. The order is important. You change the order, that changes the ratio. So if you're looking for equivalent ratios, it could just be multiplying it. So if I multiply each of those by 2, 6 to 10 is an equivalent ratio. Or multiplying by 3, I could have 9 to 15, or I could have 12 to 20. All of these are equivalent. Okay? If you ever need to test which one's equivalent, look at it like the fraction. And remember, a fraction is a division problem, right? So if I've got 3 to 5 and I do 3 divided by 5, that gives me 0.6. So if I need to check to see which one's equivalent and I can't tell by kind of looking at it, all you have to do is do the division just like that and see which one gives you that same decimal. If you did that division for those three right there, all three of them give you that 0.6. Okay? Is this really something that you need a calculator for usually? Not really. But it's usually something that's on the calculator active. That's sometimes how those go. The ones you need a calculator for, probably a little more, are the ones with the percentages, right? So back when we were working on these a while ago, we've done a few like this where it gives you like the double percentages. So we got, uh, if 35% of a number N is 56, what is 65% of N? So it's two pieces, really. Uh, those are our two problems. And since I have two percentages, I'm going to do two proportions. Who can tell me the first proportion? Who can fill in my four blanks? Or tell me, I guess, more so. Top or bottom? We'll get to that one in a second. All right, so on our right side, we got our percentage over 100, 35 over 100. That part should be kind of automatic, right? Percent over 100 on the right. The other number says is 56. 
you remember from back when we were doing this, one of the ways we could do this is by having is over of. Sometimes it's part over whole, but is over of works also. And it's is 56, so that's how we know the 56 goes on top. What we're trying to find is n. Now well, you just cross multiply and divide. So we do 56 times 100 divided by 35. What's that give us? 160. All right, so now we got a second percentage. So I got my 100. I got my percentage. What other number am I using? The 160 again. It says of n. And remember, I said is over of. So we're just putting n back down there. But this time we know what n equals. So again, cross multiply and divide. 160 times 65 divided by 100. 144? Oh, 104. Sorry. Any questions on that one? This is almost as complicated as these types of problems get. Having to do two of them like that. Uh, the other day in class, we did one where you had to do two of them. Usually, it'll just be you have to do one, but sometimes they make you do that a little extra.